Hi, I'm Bryce. I'm Bing Jin. And we are industrial designers from the National University of Singapore. We are here to share with you our experiences in incorporating AI into our design processes. Yeah, so to answer your question, uh, let's take furniture ideation, for example. It's a laborious and aesthetic-oriented process, but AI is seldom used because of its complexity, which is not aesthetic and manufacturable compared to existing products on the market. So the main part of my project was to come up with a process that is able to control the complexity of AI while allowing the designer to make controlled aesthetic choices to churn out realistic and practical generations. So for this process, it actually uses the blend tool to blend one reference image and up to three DNA images. The reference image is an existing piece of furniture that sets the overall form and camera angle. And this reference image should have a plain background as it helps to keep the composition simple and realistic. On the other hand, DNA images are additional features that you want to add to your product. But before choosing them, let's look through the eyes of AI. To us, this may be a school bus, but to AI, it could be a bunch of black and yellow stripes. This is an oversimplification, but AI essentially extracts prominent features and recognizes it as a pattern. Therefore, for a DNA image to be effective, it should have no more than two prominent features. It should also have a plain background and a similar camera angle to the reference image. This is so that AI is able to easily recognize these features and extract them while keeping the composition simple. Okay, that sounds interesting. But considering the inconsistencies of AI, does it always generate what you want? Yeah, it definitely doesn't give me what I want all the time, but mm. there are certain things that you can do to increase the accuracy of the mm. output. So for example, in this case, I was trying to add drip-like features to this tool. However, the drip-like features didn't really show up in the generated image. But recall that this process is able to take up to three DNA images, and you can actually use a second DNA image to emphasize a particular feature. And in this generation, you can actually see that the drip-like features are more pronounced. So essentially, with this process, you can pick out and combine your visual inspirations. It allows designers to get quick and realistic form visualizations during aesthetic ideation. But yeah, there are definitely some limitations to this process. It being a form finding process means that it most likely works better on things that are on a macro scale. When it comes down to products that are beautiful because of like their details or on the mic on the micro scale, it may not work as well. But I think you have a process for that, right? Yes, I actually do. My explorations mainly revolved around products whereby their beauty lies in the smallest of details. And I used the watches as a subject of my explorations. From an interview with a founder of a watch design company, the ideation process can take two to three months. And the reason for this is because there's a lot of details on the watch to be fine-tuned. He also told me that he has tried out mid journey to streamline his ideation process, but the generations that he got were very distorted and had very unclear indexes or very warped features. So I have created a watch template that can combat these issues that he has faced. In this template, you can adjust the type of watch that you want, such as a diver watch or a field watch. You can also change its color and materials as well. What's great about this process is that it's extremely repeatable and I was able to generate this many iterations within 30 minutes. Yes, I definitely did try putting the watches on humans, but it wasn't easy. And here's how I did it. So for the process that I used, it requires two images, a model image and a watch image, and a ROM template as well to help get the final outcome. For the watch image, you can choose an image that you have already generated. And for the model image, it's relatively easy to generate a model that you desire. But what's really important is to choose a model that is already wearing a watch so that AI knows where to place your watch designs. Once you have your model image, you can now combine it with a context template that I've created. This context template allows you to determine the type of shot that you want your generated image to be in. And in this case, it is a portrait photograph of the astronaut. 
Comparing it to the actual design process, getting a watch onto a model and having it photographed would probably take you months. And what's interesting about this process is that AI would change the watch design based on the given context as well. So you could use this as an additional tool to get your watches redesigned to suit its given context. And ultimately, this will skyrocket depth and accuracy in your watch design process. Well, I guess that's it for today. We hope that you have learned something from our video. Ultimately, we think that your mastery of AI depends on whether you are able to think like it. And if you are able to do so, you can turn your generations from this to this. Feel free to try the processes that we have created. And if you're a designer that has never touched the AI before, we encourage you to give it a go. Also, if you have any questions or thoughts about the video, do let us know down below. Thank, Thank you. you.